My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is this thing we often do, and sometimes we don't even know the implication of it. It is comparing ourselves with others, using someone to judge or analyze yourself, trying to know if others are enjoying more than you or perhaps suffering more than you. It is a disease. I call it a disease in the sense that it does not make you happy to know whether someone is doing better than you or not. It is not important. If we must compare ourselves, it's better for us to compare ourselves with our Creator. Compare yourself with yourself. Strive every day to be a better version of yourself. Not simply to be like someone else. Because if you are striving to be like someone else, you can never find happiness and fulfillment. You will always not be at peace, at ease. So it's a disease because you will not be at ease when you are comparing yourself with someone else. With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the World with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is the 27th day of May 2023. It is Saturday of the seventh week of Easter. Let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, and also verses 30 to 31. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 11. While our gospel passage today is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 20 to 25. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier that guarded him. After three days, he called together the local leaders of the Jews, and when they had gathered, he said to them, Brethren, Though I had done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. And he lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ quite openly and unhindered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. The throne of the Lord is in heaven. 
His eyes behold the world. His gaze probes the children of men. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. The Lord inspects the just and the wicked. The lover of violence he hates. For the Lord is just and loves deeds of justice. The upright shall behold his face. The upright shall behold your face, O Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will send you the Spirit, I will send the Spirit of truth to you, says the Lord. He will guide you into all the truth. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Peter turned and saw, following them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, who had leaned close to his breast at the supper, and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that you remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. The saying spread abroad among the brethren that this disciple was not to die. Yet, Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did where every one of them to be written Suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph child of God. Like I said at the beginning, there is a disease that is called comparing ourselves with others, bothering ourselves with what becomes of this person or that person. In yesterday's gospel passage, we read how Jesus appeared to the disciples again after his resurrection. And then he said to Peter, he asked Peter a question three times. Do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me? This question was to reinstate Peter to his position as the head of the church. The, question, the fact that Jesus asked him three times reminds Peter of the three times that he betrayed Jesus. So to reinstate him, to restore him, and to remind him of his primary mission of feeding the flock, tending the sheep, taking care of the church. 
Peter probably, I, I guess, Peter was very uncomfortable with the fact that Jesus was asking him these questions. Jesus practically put Peter on the spot. While Peter denied Jesus three times, there was a disciple. <clears throat> sorry. There was a disciple who was with Jesus all through. This disciple was standing at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus. And it was through this disciple that Jesus Christ handed his mother to all of us Christians. His name is John. So I haven't asked Peter the question three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter said, yes, yes, Lord. You know I love you. You know I love you. Yes, I love you. I love you. Jesus went on to predict the kind of death that Peter would die. He said, when you are young, you tied your, best, your belt and you wish to go where you want to go. But when you are old, someone else will tie your belt for you and take you where you do not wish to go. In other words, telling Peter that he would die a martyr's death for the sake of the proclamation of the gospel. So, Peter probably was sad. I guess he was sad. I knew he was sad because nobody would be, would be in a good mood to hear or uh, to be told the kind of death he would die. And it was then that Peter looked back and he saw John, the beloved disciple, the one that did not deny Jesus Christ three times, the one who was actually there with Jesus. When Jesus needed the disciples the most. And so Peter asked Jesus a seemingly innocent question. A question that any one of us would ask Jesus. Having been told how we would die. And Jesus, uh, Peter said to, to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? What about John? Is he also going to die the way I will die? And Guess what was Jesus' response? If I say he will stay, he will remain till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Jesus was telling Peter, it doesn't matter. Your mission, your task is more important than having to know what will be the fate of this person or of that person. Jesus was basically telling Peter, mind your business. Mind your business. Focus on your call. Focus on the goal, the mission that God has given to you. Like Peter. There is often this tendency in us Christians to, be compare, to compare ourselves with others. We want to know what's going to happen to this person, what's going to happen to this person. Sometimes we begin to ask questions like, am I doing better than this person? We are not all called to the same calling. We don't have all have the same calling. And even amongst us ministers who have been called to be shepherds in the, uh, in, in the, in the vineyard of Christ, we don't all have the same calling. Every one of us. Yes, we are all priests, we are all pastors, we are all, uh, you know, religious in one way or the other. But we still have our unique calling within the calling. We all have our unique gifts, our unique talents, our unique opportunities. And, you know, even amongst the lay people, there is this tendency to want to compare. Let's compare Father A with Father B or Father A with Pastor B or Pastor B with Pastor C. Don't do that. Let us avoid that, that, having to, that, that tendency of comparing one another. Yes, to the ordinary eye, you may say, um, John did better than Peter. John did not betray Jesus. John was actually there when others ran away, and Peter denied Jesus Christ. But the question is, 
if John was the one who faced those temptations that Peter faced, would he have done better than Peter? So when we begin to compare, we don't know the whole story. Don't say, oh, I'm better than this person. Do you know the kind of temptation that this person is facing? Do you know the background of this person? You're not God. Who are you to, to now begin to, to, to compare and to judge? Let us avoid that. Focus on, your, focus on the goal. Jesus said to Peter, hey, what, is, what is that to you? What is your business? How it take consign you? If I say make you stay till I come back. Which, so they said that even the other disciples, they didn't understand Jesus. And they said, ah, that means John, John is not going to die. He's going to live forever. And John is the one writing this gospel. John is telling us, this is what happened. Jesus Christ did not say, I will live forever. He only said, how it take consign you? How is, what is that to you? That was the only question. Follow me. You are called to be a fisher of men. Go and fish men. And stop bothering yourself whether this person's cross is lighter than your own or whether this person is going to die a matter's death or whether this person is going to be canonized. It is not your business. Do your best. Do your best. Mind your business. We cannot all be the same. That is the point. We cannot all be the same. Even though we labor in the same vineyard, we still cannot be the same. Because everybody has a unique calling. Everybody has a unique space. Everybody has a unique history. Even twins, identical twins that were born the same day, they still have certain things that are unique to each of them. Be your best. Be at your best. Mind your business. You see, Paul, in our first reading today, he was taken to Rome, and they put a soldier to guard him. So he was under house arrest. But even as he was under house arrest in Rome, Paul continued to gather the Jews together to hold meetings, to preach. Paul continued to mind his business, the business of evangelization. He wrote, even in prison, Paul asked for writing materials and he started writing. Those letters of Paul occupy a great proportion of the New Testament today. Peter did not write as much. Even John, the beloved, the one about whom Jesus said, if I say is to remain with me till I come back, what is that? Even John did not write as much as Paul wrote. But all of them, whether Peter, Paul, or, or, or John, they still fulfilled their calling. All of them could not have been writers. All of them could not have been fishermen. All of them could not have been present at the foot of the cross. So we cannot all be the same. We cannot all do the same. But then, every one of us, every one of us is called to be at our very best. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace to mind our business, to focus on the task that he has given to us, rather than bother ourselves with what will be the fate of this person or of that person. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Do have a wonderful weekend ahead.